the National Board for Higher Mathematics, which has played uh, a very significant role in influencing the way mathematics is done in this country through various grants, lecture programs, conferences that they have funded. Um, you have been involved with this organization for a long, long time, practically from the inception. Uh, and certainly as a chairman for about 20 years, I think, uh, would you please describe what has been your goal in shaping the sort of mathematics that gets done uh, and influencing decisions and young minds through uh, the NBHM as a funding agency and also otherwise? Well, you see, actually my association with NBHM starts even before it was formed. Right. <laughs> what happened was this, uh, there was always a complaint from the mathematical community at large saying that uh, not enough was being done by the, for mathematics by the government. Mm -hmm. And they attributed it to the role of the Department of Atomic Energy. What are, the Department of Atomic Energy has charge of, uh, there's something called allocation of business right. by the cabinet. Mm -hmm. And in that allocation of business, the Department of Atomic Energy was given the charge of higher mathematics. Right. This is because apparently Baba wanted it under his control and he go, got Nehru to do this. Agreed, yeah. So the cabinet had passed a resolution saying that mm -hmm. it will be with math, mathematics, will be with mathematics and nuclear science will be with mm -hmm. uh, the Department of Atomic Energy. Yeah. That was what was decided. And there was a general complaint that the Department of Atomology was not doing enough for mathematics outside its own one institution, namely Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. These complaints were going around for quite some time. And at some point, uh, it was, a, there was a representation of the Planning Commission mm -hmm. saying that uh, it should be taken out of, uh, mathematics should be taken out of Department of uh, uh, Atomic Energy and given to either the Department of Education. In those days, it was not called human resources, the yeah. Department of Education or to the Department of Science and Technology. This was right. what, what was proposed. Now, this, of course, when it comes to government, uh, Matt was referred to the department itself, to the department, atomic energy itself, to take a decision on that. And the, in those days, the only support uh, mathematics was receiving outside the Tata Institute uh, from the Department of Atomic Energy was through what they called Board of Research in Nuclear Sciences. Mm -hmm. The Board of Research in Nuclear Sciences had uh, several divisions, various uh, subjects, and mathematics is one of them. Whereas physics was divided into sub sub subjects, mm -hmm. you know, smaller units and so on. Mathematics is one of them. And uh, the only thing that uh, that Bjarnos was doing was to support research projects. Mm -hmm. If somebody submitted a research project, uh, they would look into it and give support to that. And for mathematics, even that support was kind of very small because all that the mathematics asked for was some student to work on some problem and so the siphon for the student that's about it and maybe some, some books, uh, books to be purchased. books maybe yeah. that's about it so there was never a proposal which yeah. would exceed for instance uh, some 20000 rupees a, mm. a year or something that's the kind of thing that was yeah. happening and even that many pro projects were rejected mm -hmm. there was a committee for mathematics inside the, the baroness the committee in those days when i first came to know about it, it was headed by Bamba. Mm -hmm. And uh, then M.S. Narasimhan was a member of that committee. At some point, I became secretary to that uh, mathematics committee. Mm -hmm. In general, uh, from fairly early on, I thought the Tata Institute must, people from Tata Institute should take an active role in promoting mathematics in the country at large and do something about it. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to just uh, develop Tata Institute as something I had felt even as a very young man, I had felt that way. And so I was quite happy to uh, become secretary of that uh, BRNS. Uh, but I could see that uh, the kind of proposals coming were not good mm. and very difficult to support any of them. And the majority of were rejected and only a small amount was spent. And this is part of the complaint made by them that only a small amount is spent on mathematics, etc., etc. <coughs> so at one point, uh, the matter was taken to the Planning Commission and the Planning Commission referred bit also to the Department of Atomic Energy among other people. I don't know who else there. Mm -hmm. And the Department of Atomic Energy sent the letter from the Planning Commission, a copy to uh, <coughs> the Tata Institute, to the Dean Mathematics Faculty at Tata Institute for his, com his or her comments, mm -hmm. similarly to the Chairman Board of Research in Nuclear Sciences. Right. 
Uh, at that time, the chairman was uh, Professor Udgankor, who was a physicist from Tata Institute. Mm. And it came to the dean. Actually, at that time, I happened to be the dean. Mm -hmm. But it did not come. I was away from Bombay mm -hmm. around that time for a small stretch mm -hmm. period. So, it was into who was the acting dean. Acting dean at the time was Sridharan, I think. It, when it came to that time, it also came with the note of, of Udwankas. Mm -hmm. Already Udwankar had given a note in which he had said uh, there is no... So, what, one of the things uh, that the Planning Commission asked is that uh, whether there is a case for setting up a separate funding agency along the lines of National Council for uh, Social Science Research, National mm -hmm. Council for Historical Research along those lines. So, it's, uh, this was one of the things that was... Uh, mm -hmm. In the, in the letter itself as a, as a possible proposal. Mm -hmm. So when it came to Tata Institute, uh, along with the note from uh, uh, BRNS chairman, mm -hmm. uh, the BRNS chairman said there's no need for any such separate thing. The BRNS is to doing adequate work for that and so on. I was not in agreement with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I knew what BRNS was doing for mathematics. I was mm -hmm. not in agreement. And anyway, I was not here. And the uh, faculty we met and didn't take uh, serious note of this and they simply uh, <laughs> agreed with uh, Udgonkar. Uh -huh. and, uh, and when I came back, I saw the resolution of the faculty which mm -hmm. said they agreed with this and so on. I immediately sent a note to all my uh, fellow members of the faculty saying, I don't think this is the right decision. We should uh, take an active role in this. It's not correct to say that uh, nothing need be done. Uh -huh. It is probably a good idea for the Department of Atomology itself to set up a, an autonomous body to support mathematics separately, is what I wrote. Mm -hmm. And I, I said I disagreed with uh, Udgonkar. Mm -hmm. I circulated that note mm -hmm. to members, who all then agreed with <laughs> And then I sent the note mm -hmm. to the DAE saying that there is a good mm -hmm. case for forming a separate uh, thing mm -hmm. and so on. In fact, after that, uh, both MS Narasimhan and uh, Ramanan were away. Mm -hmm. So they had not also, you know, just, seen. When, wow. when they came back, they saw the thing. And what had happened was that uh, they were not aware of the second note which I circulated. Mm -hmm. In fact, Ram, and, uh, but they saw the letter I had written to the Department of Atomic Energy mm -hmm. and Ramanan took strong exception to that. This is goes contrary to the mm -hmm. resolution. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, point, I then sorted it out to telling them that I already got this circulated, uh, mm -hmm. done this, etc. So when this went back to the then Department of Atomic Energy again said we will form a committee to look into this possibility of uh, forming a, mm -hmm. a national council for research and so on. Mm -hmm. And they uh, made, uh, so they, they, didn't, uh, they didn't form a full committee, they appointed uh, the chairman and asked the chairman to form the committee. Mm -hmm. The chairman was uh, K.J. Ramanathan. Mm -hmm. K.J. Ramanathan did nothing for six months mm -hmm. and then resigned from the chairmanship of the committee. <laughs> <laughs> At which point they appointed M.S. Nassiman as the chairman. Uh -huh. Then M.S. Nassiman formed the committee in which I became a member, another member from Tata Institute was Ramanan, the three of us from Tata Institute were there, mm -hmm. and there a number of other people, Jay and Kapoor from uh, IIT Kanpur, for instance. Then there was a uh, man by the name M.P. Singh who was at mm -hmm. IIT Delhi, mm -hmm. and Bamba was there, and so on. There was a, a committee of some 11 or 12 people, I don't remember the other names, mm -hmm. and so on. The committee had been formed. Mm -hmm. And uh, the committee uh, met for the first time, uh, and announcement's chairmanship, and uh, Narasimhan, what so happened that I was the only one who had done some homework. Mm. I had in fact written an elaborate uh, a note saying what are the things, how such a thing should be, uh, committee should be formed and uh, what, what it should do. I mean, it is uh, already a number of uh, things that uh, NBHM can do uh, if a thing is formed. I had written that up. So when I came to the committee, I found that nobody else had done any homework. And, but I had given my note to Narasimhan. Narasimhan took out my note and said, uh, Raghunath, why don't you uh, tell, us, tell us what you have written in this note? And then I, gave, I went through the note. And then the committee unanimously recommended that uh, com uh, National Council, uh, they wanted only one difference, they wanted to call it National Board. They didn't mm -hmm. want to call it National Council, an autonomous organization for funding mathematical research. And, uh, and they also, Essentially, what I had written, the entire list of things which NBHM can do, these are the, was written up as the mandate for NBHM. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's about a dozen things I had written down. And then NBHM was formed. Mm -hmm. And again, DAE appointed Na uh, Narasimhan as chairman. And Narasimhan 
before forming the full committee, actually consulted me and Ramanand here, mm. and a committee was formed. And the first thing we did was to say, it is better to have Kapoor inside this mm. <laughs> board rather than outside, so let's have him on the board. Uh -huh. Jayan Kapoor was, as you know, mm -hmm. a very troublesome character in those days. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he came into NBHM. And uh, one of the things I had said, uh, even in my note, saying that uh, mathematics being pursued in various uh, university departments is not of high quality. It's uh, very it's often outdated uh, material is being pursued and so on. And NBHM should make efforts to see how to change it. So organizing summer schools is one of the okay. programs I had uh, for university students and so on, one of the programs I suggested, for instance, in that. What was I saying? It's, uh, yeah, the, I was, I was sort of a strong feeling that uh, good mathematics was not being pursued. And to change that, one of the things is that graduate students should be exposed to good mathematics. And that could be done through summer schools. That was mm. the, mm. one of the things I had actually written down even in that uh, mm. initial document, which I wrote down. And uh, so that's, the, it came into existence in 83. Is when the eighty uh, three October is when uh, NBHM. the NBHM came into existence. It it's based on a so called demi official order mm. issued by the Chairman of Atomic Commission, then Ramana, mm. which said it will function autonomously, uh -huh. uh, and it said very little. It is just mm. a, a half a oh. page note oh, right. in which it said it will function autonomously. Blah blah, and the committee mm. uh, list was given. That's it. And in the beginning, the budget was in the order of a couple of, you know, maybe you know, 20 lakhs was the mm -hmm. first budget, for instance, of the of yeah. NBHM. And even that was, we found it difficult to spend because <laughs> we had just then formulated various possibilities for how various things can be done. And one of the things, uh, if I remember, I, I don't remember many of the things mm -hmm. I wrote down in that document, but practically every uh, uh, initiative which is taken by NBHM is already there in that uh, document. One thing I know is the travel support was part of the very early initiative. Right, right. Because uh, I no, did. Uh, one one of the early that. initiatives is uh, library support. Ah, library and support. And in fact, I felt strongly that like, university libraries were not receiving enough support from UGC. Right, right. We should supplement it. And that's one of the. I have what to tell you. When I visited Allahabad, they were very proud that their library was uh, very good. They could even subscribe to journals. Mm. And so on. And yeah, they were thanking the, the tis, NBHM. It is the NBHM initiative that improved many, many universities. Mm, right, right. And in fact, one of my ideas was that some can be recognized as regional libraries and then can be supported at a much bigger scale, can be located at the departments which are reasonably good, universities where departments are reasonably good. And that was the kind of idea. Right, right. And that, that one of the, I think that's one of the major things uh, which helped universities a good deal mm. this library support. And then travel support for attending conferences. Right. And things that kind, mm. and uh, we are we are I was also ac acutely aware of the fact that if that such support is given, senior people may grab it, and so I put an age limit. Mm. So such things right, uh, right. were done at that time. Right. Uh, mm. But you know, many of the things which and uh, did you have support for writing books? You know, no, no. Sort of no. I mean, it. see, the, the, there are some. So there were that, that was specifically not uh, done. I mean, not because I didn't want it. It didn't occur to me at the time. I, nobody else thought of it either, that's it. Mm. Well, of course, we continue to do the research projects thing mm. without question. Yeah, right. And then organizing summer schools is one of the things which NBHM was doing regularly mm. at, in the beginning. Mm. And that is one of the things which uh, Tata and Shoot had stopped doing. So I thought that should be supplemented and should be done more systematically and so on. And in fact, I wanted uh, many of them to be in applied mathematics, which I thought was weak. But mm. unfortunately, we had, didn't have the right people to organize and conduct them. In fact, we conducted two of them for, about which there were very negative reports at the end. Uh -huh. So I never tried to continue after that. Well, this was uh, 83 is when it was formed. And uh, the, it, was, it had a three year term at the end of which it had to be reconstituted. At the end of three years, um, uh, Ramanan opted out of secretaryship. He had yeah. the secretary. Narsim asked me if I would become secretary. I said yes. But the next year, practically, uh, the MS Assessment decided to Quit. go away on a long leave mm -hmm. to Germany. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, therefore, he quit the chairmanship. Mm. And then they had to find a new chairman. Mm. Initially, the department was not uh, particularly keen that I should become chairman. Mm -hmm. They tried various <laughs> people, mm. didn't work. Mm. They asked me if I would be continuous secretary. 
Mm. I said, no, I had a special relationship with Narasimhan mm. where I would be willing to be secretary, but mm. I won't be secretary for any other yes, chairman is what mm. I told them. Mm. Finally, they had seemed to have no <laughs> choice. They asked me to become chairman. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> and I agreed to mm. be the chairman at the time. So that is how it, things developed in NBHM. I do not know. I think over the years, NBHM has done some reasonable service mm. to the mathematical community. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, things are not doing very well now. Right now, it's, yes. It's uh, probably yeah. more because of the bureaucratic interference from the Department of Atomic Energy, which wasn't happening in the past. Yeah, right, right. But uh, is, does it not say the original letter, it would be autonomous? You see, the part, point is that uh, <laughs> from the point of view of the bureaucracy or the government, that document is not oh. <laughs> legally <laughs> correct. I see. If you want an autonomous institute, first of all, it has to be registered with some registrar of societies or something, which was never done by the Department of Atomic Energy. Okay. It is not registered as a society. So, in fact, we had a, in the beginning, they let us open a bank account and discovered at some point that it would be illegal for a non-registered body to have a bank account. <laughs> we made us close the bank account and when the bank account was there, it was even, the efficiency was even better because we had to directly do things. It was not any clerk or any bureaucrat who was doing it. Mm. It is the secretary of the NBHM who was usually acad academic who was doing it. It was done much more efficiently than now. In fact, you, you see the, almost with the sanction order, the uh, money will go. Mm -hmm. It was like that. Right, right. It's not, uh, now <laughs> it's very different. And, but even after uh, the taking, taking over the bank account, we still continue to function fairly efficiently. Mm, right. It's only in the last four or five years that things have gone pretty bad. No, I must say um, that you are, generally speaking, having direct access to the chairman of DAE used to make a difference, as far as I can see. Uh, in the recent past, what has happened is either because of the, because of who is the chairman of DAE uh, and, you know, people who run NBHM, not having uh, the same sort of rapport has, has caused a serious sort of... Uh, uh, problem actually in uh, no I think uh, the more serious problem is that uh, it's not so much the rapport but it's the attitude of the chairman himself yeah that's what I mean I mean it is, you know. uh, it's not a question of uh, I mean access to the chairman is dependent on his attitude I mean the, if he takes it sufficiently seriously he will give you access mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if it doesn't happen that access is one of the things right but even if without access in the old days what would happen is that if the recommendation went from the board mm -hmm. it is immediately implemented correct now, it is, everything is being cleared by the chairman or, uh, mm. or an additional secretary or something right. before it is oh. implemented. Yeah. That was not the case before. Mm. Uh, yeah. It's unfortunate, but uh, that's what's happening now. Mm. And which, of course, uh, means the efficiency has gone down cons considerably. And the academics, uh, the board is con con considered entirely of academics with only one bureaucrat from the Department of Atomic Energy. That used to be the case. Right. But, and now... It's continuous in the case, but the bureaucrat seems to have much greater importance no, right. than he used to in the mm. old days. Mm. The, the, uh, I don't know. But, uh, the, some of the things uh, NBHM set out to achieve, I think it did achieve. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, another thing which uh, happened during my tenure was uh, supporting travel to the ICM specifically mm. in, for the International Congress. Mm. That was something which uh, came up during my tenure. And of course, one of the reasons, uh, I don't know, it's just, uh, well, I had a long tenure, it's a yeah. long period. Yeah, 20 yeah. Years. Uh, about 20 years. From 84 to 2006 or yeah, something. Right. Is yeah. How, how long about, I, about 20 years, yeah, that's yeah. what I said. 2006, when I retired from TIFR, I also decided to lay down office. In my, or, or did I continue? I don't know. No, 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 you did not. because 2006 uh, is probably when I yeah, quit. Yeah. And, uh, because uh, in preparation to the ICM, we had Dani as the uh, chair. Also, yes, yeah. there was also this ICM coming yeah, up, right, and right, uh, right. well. But one thing you should perhaps mention is uh, the Panorama lectures also, which were Th that an, uh, uh, yeah. a NBHM initiative yeah, yeah. actually. Yeah, it was initiated by NBHM. Yes, right. uh, we also had the schemes under which universities could invite uh, yeah. visitors right. from abroad. Mm -hmm. so it was. It was often very difficult for universities to do right, that, right. but we made this program available. If a university wants to invite a visiting professor, they can uh, apply to uh, NBHM. NBHM. And NBHM, of course, will look at the credentials of the visitor, 
before it decided. Mm. And once it's decided, it will you know, give them honorarium as well as travel to mm. the country. Mm. This was uh, at that time new, mm. uh, it was not available. Well, there are some number of things. Uh, well, uh, also NBHM um, made a year long celebration of the Ramanujan centenary. Yes, yes, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is uh, NBHM took the initiative uh, to do that and organized uh, three summer schools, one each on subjects in which Ramanujan had uh, contributed significantly, one on uh, automorphic forms, one on uh, special functions, and one on the circle method. Mm -hmm. Three conferences we organized in different parts. Uh, the one on automorphic forms was done in Bombay, one in uh, Unlettered Number Theory was done in uh, Pondicherry or Chennai, one of the two places, mm -hmm. and uh, the one in uh, on uh, special functions done in uh, uh, Mount Abu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This uh, this man uh, Agarwal mm -hmm. was uh, our uh, vice chancellor uh, yeah. of some university, uh, in Raj, Jaipur University, perhaps at that time. Mm -hmm. What Agarwal is he? I forget. R.P. Agarwal. R.P. Yeah. Right. Who organized one? I must say that uh, while the two on the number theory things were good. The special conference, the special function was not particularly mm. well done. Mm. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that was the, and that there we already had, we all had an international symposium uh, for the birth center in Ramarajam in Chennai. Mm. It was a, an interesting experience for me. Mm. I, I'm not a number theorist, mm. <laughs> <laughs> but and I, I also, I'm not very familiar with Ramarajam's work, mm. but nevertheless, I undertook the organizing mm. of the thing. And there were a number of uh, visitors from abroad. The conference is, uh, symposium was uh, inaugurated by Rajiv Gandhi. Mm. And there were some amusing yeah. incidents relating to that, but I don't think yeah. I should go into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, it was a five day conference, mm. but plumb in the middle of the conference, uh, the Chief Minister of uh, Madras died. Mm. And everything came to a standstill. So for two days, uh, the conference is uh, inaugurated on 22nd and uh, M.J. Ramchandran died on 24th. Mm -hmm. So 24th evening or something, 25th, everything was shut down in Madras. We couldn't hold the conference uh, because we couldn't move the, uh, the speakers from the hotel to the venue of the conference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the mm -hmm. conference took place in... <laughs> so in IIT, you couldn't move them there. It was uh, impossible. Don't, no, no transport on the way. But uh, so two days it was off. But then the, the, what, what happened was this, uh, the sp invited speakers decided that each of them will cut down their talk to 45 minutes mm -hmm. and accommodate the rest of the speakers mm -hmm. in the one day that was left. Uh -huh. and so all the speeches, all the talks, talks were given. Oh, mm -hmm. And uh, so mm -hmm. it was. But perhaps, uh, you know, this is a good time for you to continue this naturally sort of led to the 125th year celebration of Ramanujan. As well, that may not be so much NBHM, but uh, you were again involved in yeah. organizing. I, I was very much involved in the 125th year. Right. Because one of the things I felt was that the not enough was done at the time of the centenary. Right. To propagate Ramanujan's mm. uh, mathematics or for that matter to just to get him known mm. better in the country at large. So I thought 125th year is another opportunity to do that. And I also wanted a number of things at that time. Mm. Uh, of course, it was just an excuse to mm. make sure that you have uh, uh, more mathematical activity. And that is when I formulated this uh, idea of a panorama lectures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was, the idea was that you get some very distinguished person from abroad, spend a week here and give a course during that week of lectures, which is a kind of survey of his area. So, or of a chosen topic in this area, where which is very hot and which uh, people should be exposed to in this country. Uh, another thing in the 125th year celebrations that, uh, again, you were involved, since you didn't mention it, was the translation of Carnegie's book. Yes. That involved a lot of money. I think that money was given by NBHM. And, and, uh, and all the programs organized in the 125th century, the money came from NBHM. So now I think we should talk about ICM. Uh, I think uh, the ICM uh, in Hyderabad in 2010, uh, India perhaps was not quite ready uh, for, for holding a conference 
of that size and magnitude at that point of time. Uh, when is it that, uh, you know, the thought occurred to you? I kind of know that it didn't quite occur to you. I mean, there were various circumstances that led to uh, thinking about the ICM uh, or, or thinking about doing it in 2010. So, can you please describe yeah, yeah. the circumstances? You see, the first time the idea of hosting an ICM was mooted by some tourist mm -hmm. in, people involved. I mean, it's a government of India organization. I forget exactly the right. name. Yeah. There's a man by name Puri yeah. who wrote me a letter asking me whether uh, uh, NBHM, uh, in fact, suggesting that India should organize uh, the International Congress for Mathematicians in 2006. Mm. That's, that was his proposal. This, this was written sometime in two, year 2000 or some such thing. Right. Of course, where, where he got the idea from, I know. I, I knew then. Yeah, right. It was because Beijing was organizing something in mm. uh, the ICM in 2002. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we are uh, rivals of Beijing for various yeah, things. With, uh, <laughs> and so China. some government media agency yeah. thought, if yeah. China can do it, why shouldn't India do it? Right. And so this guy wrote to me. Mm. And I wrote back to him saying, uh, sorry, I don't think it's a good idea because I don't think we have the necessary infrastructure. Mm. And uh, more importantly, it is not clear that our mathematical community is strong enough mm. for such a thing. Mm. In fact, I wrote to him that. Mm. Though I was a little uh, reluctant to mention this fact to outside <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so I wrote to him that. But he was persistent. He wrote mm. back saying that infrastructure, there will be no problem. I can tell you, we can do this, we can do that, etc., etc. Mm. Anyway, I left. And then, uh, somewhat half-heartedly, we made a bid for uh, the 2006 thing, but uh, it was turned down uh, by ICM, but uh, by IMU. By IMU. Mm -hmm. And one of the peculiar reasons they gave is that uh, we had uh, 2002 in uh, Asia. We don't have to, to have two consecutive things uh, in Asia. Mm -hmm. at, as it happened in 2006, when this was discussed at the General Assembly. The French delegate said, what do you mean by this? You have uh, 1994 in Zurich and 1998 in Berlin. Mm. <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> China and uh, India are far apart enough. <laughs> Some such thing. Anyway, uh, but, so it uh, got fizzled out. Then, um, when, I came, when I came back after the... Uh, to, uh, I had gone to the 2002 Beijing conference and I came back... Uh, once again, this uh, gentleman, Puri, wrote me a letter saying, let us have a bid, even if this has failed, let's have the next one, some such thing, and so on. And finally, at some point, uh, I changed my mind. I said, okay, let's experiment. How long are you going to wait? Uh, mm. we'll, try, we'll try for the 2010 thing. Mm. That's what I th thought of. Then I talked to some of the other mathematicians around, and mm. they were reasonably enthusiastic, not to come as negative as I was, for instance. So I said, okay, we'll go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. And that's how we made a bid for uh, 2010, oh, and yeah. it worked. Uh, I, was, I must confess that uh, I was not exactly confident about doing these things, but it worked. It uh, seems to have... Did you, did you get the feeling that the opinion at that time was actually divided about doing the ICM itself? Yeah, there were Until a pretty late uh, stage, the mathematical community wasn't sure that this was such a great idea. I know, I know. That uh, there are, you know, there okay. are several people who had reservations. And, right. and, you know, I myself was not a wholehearted right. uh, you know, supporter of the idea. But, I, I, but you know, at, in some, at some point, uh, <clears throat> I thought, suppose I don't do it now, mm. will it be taken up? Will, is going, will it be done in the near future right. uh, when we are more ready and things are kind? Then I also thought that I probably had the kind of clout now mm. to swing the International mm. Mathematical Union, mm. which the next person who takes such an initiative may not have, and right. all these considerations. Right. I was on the IMU Executive Committee right. already. Right. So all these considerations, I said, let me plunge into this. Mm -hmm. There is one question uh, involving why should one do an ICM? As you know, we were under great pressure from <coughs> Martin Grustel in particular, saying that we must be getting some mileage out of the government, out of, in terms of funding and other things, 
because we are doing the ICL. Uh, so he kept saying something about publicizing, telling the government yeah, we are yeah. doing all this. Do you think we succeeded but in before that? that uh, you know, I had organized uh, the International Mathematical Olympiad mm. in 1996 right. in, in Bombay. Yeah, perhaps. In uh -huh. Bombay. Yeah. I, initially, I must also say this, the Olympiad program is something which NBHM uh, right. uh, started in a big way. Right. But I personally was against starting such a program in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I was a late con later convert. Mm -hmm. In fact, the man who was responsible for pushing NBHM into starting the Olympiad program is Jayan Kapoor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We started it. I was uh, not very favorably inclined. But after it started, and I saw and saw the kind of uh, enthusiasm among uh, school students, mm. which it generated, I thought it was a good idea to continue. Con continue. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Initially, I was not in favor, and that also gave me an idea that we should probably do things which will excite the public about mathematics, and that is another reason why I s decided to plunge for mm -hmm. ICM in 2010. Right. And uh, well. So, my own opinion, uh, we had to do a lot to publicize things within India. Mm -hmm. But international publicity, I was not uh, greatly concerned with. Mm -hmm. For one thing, uh, uh, the lay public outside uh, India, mm -hmm. I don't see what they are going to get in, out mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. something being conducted in India. And secondly, the lay public in general are not interested yeah, in mathematics in any case. Mm -hmm. And But I was also I had also another concern. You will be assembling a large number of uh, Jewish people mm -hmm. in uh, India. Uh, India. And the current uh, worry about terrorists and so on, mm -hmm. if they get publicity, if it gets permission mm -hmm. publicity, mm -hmm. it may be poses security problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want to enter into a big scale international uh, okay. publicity, which Martin Gretzer was secretary of IMU kept on insisting. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to tell him that this is the reason because if I said that the reason, <laughs> should you conduct it in India, maybe mm -hmm. the next question that right, will be raised. Right, right. So I didn't want to say him. So it's a kind of tightrope walking which I mm -hmm. have to do. I have to at one stage, at one time keep publicity in India going, mm -hmm. but not international publicity and uh, not tell them why I don't want international publicity and things are kind. It was a little difficult, but ultimately at some point, I, when it was close enough to the thing, I told Martin Gretschel. Mm -hmm. In fact, I told the president of the IMU, mm -hmm. Martin Gretschel complained to this, the president, the president <laughs> wrote me a letter. And I wrote back to the president, uh, see, the president in fact told me that, you know, Martin Gretschel, what Martin Gretschel tells you is what the IMU wants, mm -hmm. not his personal opinion and so on. At that point, I wrote him saying, yes, I very well know it is the IMU's opinion, but the IMU in wanting such publicity is not doing the right thing for the following reasons. At that time, I spelt out why I don't want to give get publicity. Mm -hmm. The publicity, international publicity started just three months before the event. Yeah. Whatever we did. Right. And also, the, when we actually tried to do that, the journalists there were not interested. Mm -hmm. These guys talk big, I mean, what do you do? You write, mm -hmm. all that you can do is to contact journalists and tell them this is happening. Yeah. But they don't write anything in the newspapers, there's nothing you can do about it. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Anyway, that's. But uh, yeah. as it turned out, of course, I was, uh, you know, I was a little mildly, worried about the success of the thing. You know, I have, uh, I don't know, it's a brash self-confidence that things will work out. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not, uh, and I luckily had assembled a good team oh, yeah. around me which could, could deliver. Mm -hmm. So it all worked out very well and I think the I see it went, went off quite well. well. Yeah, yeah, it went off quite well. You should perhaps mention the Lilavati Prize because we are talking about publicity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, at, uh, around that time, uh, this is an idea which I had that uh, the, the, there are uh, prizes for, uh, you know, popularizing science, mm -hmm. okay, but not specifically mathematics. And when you popularize science, it is easier to popularize sciences other than mathematics. That's right. And inevitably, the prizes go to biologists, uh, uh, other sciences. So I thought it may be a good idea to have a special prize for publicizing mathematics, for uh, popularizing mathematics. And uh, I tried to see how to get the money for that. I first thought, okay, let me get the money from the government, which I tried. And uh, the Department of Atomic Energy agreed to it, but on a one-time on a one basis. One time, when you have this conference in, uh, bomb in India, know. you can give the award and we'll pick up the tab. And uh, I know it's a small amount of money. Some $15,000 is what I proposed, yeah, right. mm. because it's an international thing. And DAE agreed. And we pushed through, I formed a committee to 
decide on the price. And the first prize was given to Simon Singh, who wrote this book on Fermat's Last Theorem, mm. as well as the book on codes and things that kind. And I think he's done a marvelous job of uh, popularizing mathematics. I formed a committee with uh, M.S. Asim as the chair. And uh, the, uh, the then uh, president of the IMU was one of the members. Mm -hmm. uh, I was myself a member, but this was the committee which awarded the prize to. And then after the thing was over, I tried to see if the government would continue. The government was uh, unwilling to continue. Then I wrote to the Infosys Science Foundation, suggesting that they could support this activity. And they immediately said yes. Mm -hmm. I must also say that uh, I had got a lot of private support from uh, various uh, organizations and even individuals for the ICM. for the ICM itself. I, we received a donation of the order of uh, three crores altogether mm -hmm. from outside. Mm -hmm. The government of India had uh, promised uh, 12 crores as the budget that was formed. But we could get an additional amount of three crores from outside. And NBHM, sorry, uh, Infosys even housed... Uh, in, in, yeah, yeah. Infosys didn't give uh, money, mm -hmm. but uh, they gave they gave they gave a small amount of money, twenty lakhs is what they gave us. But they also gave us free uh, their guest house, yeah. which accommodated about hundred people in Hyderabad. Uh, excellent guest house. Yeah, yeah. more than hundred actually. Huh? I mean, more than hundred. More than hundred, hundred fifty, I think. Uh, right, right. Uh, guest house, including food. Right. So that was a it was huge uh, chunk fabulous of thing. So yeah. that that could All amount to uh, more than a crore or something that kind. Yeah. Yeah. Then there was one gentleman by from Chennai. Uh, who gave his personal money, mm. his name is uh, Arti Agarajan, mm. Arti Arti is how he is mm. referred to. He gave us 60 lakhs mm. from his pocket, not, not from a company, from his pocket. Mm. It was a tremendous amount of money. Then there are other uh, mm. small amounts of money, 20 lakhs each from some four or five different agencies. I was surprised that I could collect that kind of money. Mm. And it never it made, it was not a great effort. One letter and mm. the money was produced. Mm. And of course, some letters had no effect. But some letters had effect. Mm -hmm. One letter about which I was sure didn't have effect is the letter written to Tata Trust. <laughs> Tata Trust did not give any money. <laughs> you want to go on record saying that, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Uh, and one of, the, one of the things which uh, happened at that time which made some splash mm -hmm. was uh, bringing a play from England. Right. Uh, yeah. And in, in fact, for that, the private money was helpful because mm -hmm. the government money could not be spent yeah, right, on that. Right, right. Of course, uh, just to finish this, uh, there was uh, the other thing that made news was uh, the chess um, by, uh, uh, by Anand is, uh, this uh, uh, Vishwanathan, Vishwanathan Anand, Anand uh, that that was a great yeah. hit with uh, that, uh, that was again uh, I'm kind of a little proud of that idea uh, of uh, right. organizing uh, you know chess game uh, simultaneous chess to play with about uh, 50 people. Yeah. Uh, I got Anand to do that, and uh, as a uh, blandishment, I offered. Uh, I wanted to offer uh, Anand an honorary doctorate from Hyderabad University. I talked to the vice chancellor. The vice chancellor agreed, and so I wrote to him saying that at the, on the occasion, the university would also be happy to award him honorary doctorate. But there was a mess up. <laughs> the, the degree was not awarded at the occasion when he went, came to Hyderabad. Right. And never got done afterwards either, I, I think. I think uh, they wanted him to come and take it and he refused and they right, 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 gave right. it to him so, uh, in his place or some such thing. I, mean, I don't know what happened. Although you haven't been involved directly uh, with undergraduate education or school education for that matter, I know you have rather well-defined views on these, so much so that you are responsible in organizing a conference involving school teachers from all over the country and in fact a report was prepared. Would you please elaborate? Well, see, in, in a sense, uh, I've been concerned about education both at the undergraduate and the school level for many years, but I never uh, spoke in a forum which will get, uh, which will get noticed. It's, uh, it's only somewhat recently that I thought I should do something about it. Uh, not, not just uh, drawing room talk, a little beyond that. And with that in mind, I organized a conference on school education, which was largely attended by teachers. All the speakers were teachers largely, only a handful of people. There was a, about, a total of about 50 participants, about, of which about 35 were uh, teachers. And the rest of them were people who had displayed some interest in 
school in undergraduate education. So scientists who had expressed some interest in mm. school in undergraduate education, as well as some uh, other uh, people who have worked with uh, NGOs interested in education. About a dozen people of that kind, that was it. And uh, I felt something should be done, especially because uh, the government was talking about uh, changing the education policy, was wanted uh, some kind of uh, review of the education policy and so on. So I thought it would be timely to have a conference. Mm. And very often what happens is this, all education policy matters, the matters never seem to be discussed by school teachers themselves, school education, for instance. It's not the teachers who do it. It is the people who manage teaching institutions who seem to play a big role in these things. So I felt there should be a forum where teachers can express themselves, which should be passed on to the relevant authorities, uh, their views, which could help is what I thought. And uh, I also felt that uh, the science uh, academies mm. should uh, sponsor such a thing. And I approached the Indian Academy of Sciences, which readily sponsored a meeting like that. I told them that what I want is a uh, bunch of teachers who will talk, not so much people who are involved in the management of education. And they agreed to that. And we had this conference, which I think was reasonably good conference. Some uh, report emanated, which I passed on. Mm. to the so-called Education Commission headed by this man, uh, Kasturi Rangan. And uh, he made some noises to the effect that he will take note of it or whatever. So that's where but it stands. There was a <coughs> follow-up meeting with uh, Dr. Kasturi Rangan. I remember after a few days, right. he invited few people and uh, you were there. So yeah, I was there precisely yeah. because I suppose I had organized this meeting and I would also been in touch with him. In fact, I had... Uh, invited Kasturi Rangan to inaugurate the conference I organized, but he was not free that day. Otherwise, he would have come, is what he said. Anyway, at, the, at this uh, meeting, again, I reiterated the position which I had, which the co co conference had taken. My main point has always been that uh, the teacher is the most important uh, <coughs> component of education, and there's not adequate attention being paid mm. to the, the needs of the teachers, the what their responsibilities and their uh, emoluments and things are kind. It's only if you make the teacher a respected member of the community, you are going to deliver on education in general. Mm. And that is the crucial thing, is one of, one of the things we emphasized at that meeting and it's also passed on in the report mm -hmm. that the status of the school teacher in society, you should take steps to improve that. And one important step in that is to improve their emoluments yeah. and working conditions. Mm -hmm. It, and we also, we also emphasized that the primary responsibility for the school education is entirely with the government and should not be palmed off on private agencies. I sort of uh, finish this by asking, do you miss teaching undergraduate kids? Do you miss the environment of having to teach in a classroom full of uh, uh, students at that level, undergraduate level? I, I, I've done, not in a regular place, but I've, I've done some... Uh, undergraduate uh, teaching uh, last year right i know at the I center mean. for basic sciences but the class of two, two students it doesn't right. make much sense i don't know i'm mm -hmm. i'm going to teach a larger class i'm mm -hmm. going to teach the first year students at cebs this year mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm going to teach calculus right so let me see what the experience <laughs> tells me but uh, you know yeah. the thing is that uh, the uh, emphasis is often on things which are incorrect i mean if you have a good teacher, the, the things like syllabus and so on, yes, they're important, but they're not as important as a good teacher. Mm -hmm. A good teacher can circumvent the deficiencies of syllabus, but if the teacher is bad, you present them with the best syllabus, nothing is going to happen. That's right. And uh, unfortunately, our recruitment of teachers over the years has been bad. And it's not, I'm not suggesting that the recruitment methods are necessarily bad. Of course, there's a lot of corruption. There's no question about that. Leave, aside, leave that aside. But, you know, the basic point is that who are the people who want, who aspire for a teaching job? If a very large number of them are not competent, you are not going to be, in the ultimate analysis, you will not be able to get the right people you want. Mm -hmm. So you have to make the profession attractive to young, intelligent people with an interest in education. You have to make the profession attractive, which it is not today. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there's a matter of emoluments that's important. Mm -hmm. you, of course, you, you will hear in... Uh, uh, you know, 
in various uh, assemblies, people uh, criticizing uh, teachers, government, uh, they are paid good salaries, but they are not de delivering kind of thing. But what do they mean by good salary? The guy who talks about this is probably <coughs> earning a five-figure salary a month uh, or even more. Yeah. Well, five figure is nothing now. I would say six figure salary a month in some uh, uh, maybe uh, corporate uh, uh, company or other. And he, uh, for the services he delivers to society, ultimately he doesn't deserve 10% of what he earns. Yeah. Whereas a school teacher, at least on, in principle, is delivering something to society for which he has to be respected, has to be paid much better. The compensation, in fact, very often they call it compensation in the private sector. For these uh, salaries they pay. Yeah. What, they, what, what do they mean by compensation? After the kind of cushy life these guys lead, yeah. I don't see why it's called compensation. Anyway, but these are the guys who tell us that government teachers are paid badly, mm. are, are, are paid very well and don't deliver. <laughs> so that's the kind of situation yeah. society is in. Mm -hmm. First, the attitude of the society towards the school teacher should change. Mm -hmm. It has changed over the years. It was in, at one time the school teacher was a respected member of society. Mm -hmm. He was not making big money, mm -hmm. but he was highly respected. And it's no longer the case. Yeah. Of course, there's a chicken and egg question mm -hmm. also, because the teachers in those days were good. Mm -hmm. In these days, many teachers are not good. It's also true. Mm -hmm. But uh, it probably deteriorated because the teaching profession has become less and less attractive over the years. Correct. And there's also this business. The teacher has to have a B.Ed. Now, the IAS officer doesn't have to, the bachelor's degree is adequate for you to write the IAS exam. You don't need an extra degree to uh, become an IAS officer, which is a much better paid job, much with all kinds of uh, perks and so on. But as a school teacher, why, why does the school teacher need a B.Ed? And why don't you give the school teachers an in-house uh, training as you do to IAS fellows who go and spend uh, 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 happy time in Missouri or some such place. Mm. These are the things which mm -hmm. come up and uh, <coughs> I wish I had a better forum where I could say all these things. The conference on school teachers, I didn't want to say too much. I want the teachers to say all this, but so I didn't really say this. Mathematics for me is beautiful and that's what drives me to do it. It gives me immense pleasure and in that sense it's probably more art than science. As far as I'm concerned, I should probably think myself as more of an artist than a scientist.